So today I'm very excited to show you that PowerWolf has been natively released for the Apple Silicon Mac, finally. And this port comes with some pretty significant performance improvements, but also a few steps backwards in other ways. And in this video today, I'm going to show you the good and the bad of this new Mac port. So the first piece of good news is the fact that this is a native Mac OS game optimized for Apple Silicon hardware. The game is being rendered through the Metal Graphics API. Although in this footage on my M3 Max, I'm not actually using upscaling here because it's not necessary. And we're managing to run it at 1080p on the Epic Graphics preset, hitting around that 60 FPS mark. And it's also great that this can actually run on the M1 MacBook Air with only 8 gigabytes of RAM. This is despite the fact that even on the Windows version of the game, it states the minimum requirement is 16 gigabytes. It is actually possible to achieve playable frame rates on 8 gigs. However, we did have to turn down all of the settings down to very low and set the metal effects onto performance mode. And this is a pretty aggressive form of upscaling and it doesn't make the world look too good. It looks a bit blurry, but it is possible to play. Now, this is pretty much about as positive as I can get about this game. Let's go on to the negatives. So first thing to note is that Power World on Mac OS is Mac App Store only. So if you bought the Steam version of the game and you want to use the new natively optimized version on Mac, then you're going to have to rebuy the entire game. There's zero news about whether this Mac version is going to come to Steam in the future. However, it's unlikely given the next point, which I'm going to follow up with. So the next point is that we are missing features from Power World on Mac, including the ability to join multiplayer servers. And not only that, we can't actually join games created by say Windows Steam users. If we try to join a game created by my Windows PC, then it says here cross-play functionality is currently not supported. And apparently dedicated server support is meant to be released in mid-March. So it basically means that if you want to play multiplayer Power World, then you're going to be restricted to Mac users and you don't have dedicated servers yet, which does seem a little bit crazy. I mean, this game has been out on PC for over a year now, so I'm not sure why this Mac port was released so half-baked. And to add insult to injury, it looks like the Mac version doesn't support cloud saving. However, the good news is that we can actually work around this issue by finding the save games. Just go to Finder, press Go, hold down the Option key, go to Library, then navigate to Containers and then Pal World, and then go to Library, Application Support, Epic, and then Pal, and then you can transfer your save games here. Windows save games also can be transferred here as well. I managed to load into my son's world, which was created on Windows PC. Now, I guess the saving grace of this port is the fact that it is optimized for the Apple Silicon Mac. However, performance is not actually that good. So here, for example, I'm playing the Windows version of the game through crossover using D3D Metal. Here we're running at 1080p at very low, and you can already see the problems. It's quite stuttery, and the frame rate isn't really that good. We're hitting that 15 to 20 FPS kind of average here. And based on previous experience comparing Windows translated games versus native games, you'd expect a native game to run substantially faster than this. However, in the very same scene with the exact same graphics settings, we're only getting about 4 FPS improvement running on the M1 Mac. And this is basically at best a 25% improvement in frame rate. We are using substantially less RAM in this version, but it is a little bit disappointing that this game doesn't run faster natively. Now, I guess that the main advantage of running the Mac version, of course, is native access to MetalFX upscaling. This allows us to run the game in a lower resolution and then upscale it to the display resolution, saving a lot of performance, allowing it to run on a lower end machine like the M1 MacBook Air with only 8 gigabytes of RAM at a playable frame rate between 30 and 40 FPS. It is also relatively stutter free compared to running this to a translation layer, but it isn't completely free of stutters. Often even when playing on the M3 Max chip, I will just face some random stutters. Here we've got lots of effects and enemies on the screen, so it's no wonder. But frequently when I was playing, then it would just hitch for no particular reason. I couldn't really figure out why that was happening. I'm recording this footage through a capture card, so it's not the recording, it's something happening in the game. So it's actually quite hard to recommend Power World natively for Mac, especially because the Windows version of the game can actually run pretty well if you have a slightly higher end chip and more than 16 gigabytes of RAM, like on this test of the Windows version that I'm doing on the M4 Pro chip, then performance is actually quite playable and you'll be able to play multiplayer with the rest of the world and have access to features like cloud saves. So really, if you're keen on playing Power World just on your own and you don't care about any of the multiplayer features, then definitely buy this version. It's going to be well well suited to playing just on your own on a Mac. However, if you're interested in playing multiplayer with the rest of the world right now or anytime in the future, then you probably want to invest in the Windows version of the game and run that through crossover. If you want to find out how to do that, then make sure to click on the link in the description for my Power World crossover tutorial. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this port. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.